Thank you very much. Um, I want to first of all thank every one of you for coming. I also want to thank those who have been giving us a voice in Nigeria. I'm here talking about the various human rights organizations, the various churches, the various environmental groups that have given us a voice and have continued to let our suffering to be heard both in America and elsewhere. Uh, particularly, I want to thank the various churches, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, Institute of Policy Study, Friends of the Earth, Earth First, Greenpeace, and numerous other organizations whose names I cannot immediately recall now. Um, this evening, I'm privileged to be here, and that privilege is one that comes in a very, very long time. Um, I come from a country that people call Nigeria. Nigeria is indeed a mere geographical expression. There is no country called Nigeria. I had to put this map on the wall because it is important that we know exactly what we're talking about. When you look at the map of Africa, what you, what you see are boxes and squares. Boxes. You just take a look at it. You just you look at Egypt. You look at Nigeria, Kenya. They, they they are boxes, you know. And these boxes and squares were created for economic reasons. Nigeria was actually created by multinational corporations. A company called the Royal Niger Company decided, for economic reasons, that that area is rich and it wants that area for itself. And so it went on a mission of subjugating and forcing local people to sign deeds of allegiance. These various people are nations. The Ogoni people, they are a nation. The Maasai people of Kenya, they are a nation. The Ijo people, they are a nation. The Yoruba people, the Go people, and so on and so forth, they are nations. Just like you cannot call an Irish man a Scottish, or an English man a German, so also you cannot call an Ogoni man a Yoruba, or a Maasai man an Aousa. These are the distinctions that we ought to understand as we move into this talk. Because if we don't appreciate it from that level, we will not be able to appreciate the dynamics of violence and human rights violation, the degradation of human dignity, the subjugation of the right to self-determination of these various nations that exist in that part of the world. So Nigeria was created in 1914. The name is from a river that flows right from the Futajalon Islands in the Senegal right down to Nigeria. That river is called the River Niger. The name Nigeria was actually given to the country by the wife of the general that was ruling Nigeria then, Lord Lugard. Lugard, as a soldier, had worked in India, had helped to suppress local people in India. He moved to Burma and had also helped to suppress people there. And he was hired by the Royal Niger Company headed by George Tubman Goldie to come to Nigeria and help suppress local people. So the, Niger, the Royal Niger Company was formed, and the name Nigeria came from River Niger, simply meaning the Niger area, Nigeria. The wife gave that name, the wife of Lord Lugard. They slept, they woke up in the morning, say, hi, darling. You know, this, this country, you know, I think uh, we need to give it a name. You know, it's Nigeria, it's Niger, River Niger. Okay, it must be Nigeria. There, in Nigeria, that is it. That was how the, Niger, the name Nigeria came into being. And this company was engaged in all sort of things, cutting down timber and exporting the, the, the timber, mahogany, obeshi, and all these trees to Europe. Europe needed it. The Industrial Revolution had started. They needed raw materials. One of the raw materials that was needed then 
was palm oil. Palm oil is taken from the palm tree. It's not here in this part of the world. It's a beautiful tree, very elegant tree. Every part of that tree is useful to humanity and to nature. People, local people extract the nuts, they squeeze out the oil, put them into drums, and they are then they are supposed to be bought by the Europeans. But what they did was that any time this oil, this palm oil was brought to the European um, headquarters in a place called Akasa, they would simply take this oil and send the women away and say, look, go, you savages, we need this oil, you go. It continued. Women were raped while this oil were taken away. People were killed so that the palm oil would be taken away. In 1895, the people of Nembe decided that they are not going to have this no more. The suffering is too much. They mobilized themselves and decided that they must stop the Royal Niger Company from continuing to exploit the people. The Nembe people are a clan in Nijo land. That 1895, they visited the headquarters of the company and subjected the operators of this in, in, injurious trade to justice. They destroyed all the files and the drums. But however, they did not harm any single European. Go to the records, check the archives. The biographers and writers in the, Europe, in, in the British Library and so on, they confirmed that no single European was touched. But the instruments of trade that was destroying their people were destroyed. The people felt that the files were, were, were the things that were causing them suffering. They were not educated. They don't know exactly what is going on. But they felt that the virus and the pen were what was causing them problems. So when they invaded Akasa, they were out to destroy the files and the drums. The, rep the reprisal from the oil company, take note, it is not crude oil at the time. It was palm oil. There was a violent reprisal against the Nembe people. The company invited the naval gunboats of Britain, Imperial Britain, to attack Nembe. Over 4,000 people, mainly women and children, were slaughtered in one single day using the gunboats to suppress the people. Look, you cannot stop legitimate trade. What the people, the, the European companies call legitimate trade, was to take this palm oil, not paying anything to the local people who produce it, and telling them that they are savages and no good, and taking away this palm oil. That was 1895. The resource was palm oil. 100 years later, 1995, the resource changed to crude oil. The company changed from Royal Niger Company to the Royal Dutch Shell. The instrument of suppression remained the same, soldiers and mobile policemen, armed to the teeth. They invaded Ogoni. 2,000 people have been slaughtered. 27 villages burnt down. And a writer, a peaceful, non-violent campaigner, Ken Sarowiwa, executed with eight other people. Why? They had organized non-violently and mobilized their people to demand that Shell should stop polluting their land. Shell, in collaboration with the military dictatorship, decided that the Ogoni people must die. 80,000 people from Ogoni land are internal and external refugees in the world. Some of them in the United States, some in Canada, some in Benin Republic, and so on. They've been dispersed all over the world because of economic reasons, because of corporate rule, because oil must be taken out of the Niger Delta at all costs. The Niger Delta is a beautiful place. It is a tropical rainforest belt, beautiful streams and rivers. And I think, though we may be primitive, we have something to offer to the world. We have protected our environment. We have protected our rainforest. We have protected our rivers, and we are not polluting it. I think. The whole planet Earth is connected. We can offer that to the world. But what are, what, what are the corporations doing? They are saying that no, for greed, they must take this oil 
and bring it as cheaply as possible to the United States of America. For greed, they must take this oil and suppress local people as much as they want. And so the subjugation and persecution had continued. You have heard of Ogoni. You have not heard about the Andoni people. You have heard of Ogoni. You have not heard about the Jo people. You have heard of Ogoni. You have not heard of the Robo people. You have heard of Ogoni. You have not heard about the Shakiri people. You have heard of Ogoni. You have not heard about other minorities that continue to suffer this assault on humanity.